If you're following me along in the Tech Shorts Foundation series, you'll know that we're trying to help you frame your understanding of the HPC in the cloud experience using the familiar building blocks in every HPC environment. That's compute, storage, networking, and software. Now, to date, we're going to talk about the AWS Elastic Fabric Adapter, or EFA, which is our specialized HPC and machine learning network interface. Let's dive in. The Elastic Fabric Adapter is a custom-built, high-speed network adapter built into dozens and dozens of Amazon EC2 instance types and provides the same experience as you'd find on a traditional on-premises HPC cluster with a lot of equally exotic fabrics. It comes in a variety of form factors. Our first EFA implementations used 100 gigabit interfaces, but we also now have some using 25 gigabit and some using 400 gigabits. One of EFA's strengths is that its underlying protocol, a thing called SRD, can truly fill up those pipes more efficiently than other methods. That's a cue, by the way, not to overlook instance types with 25 or 50 gigabit interfaces. We found them more than sufficient for most CFD simulations, which is a reminder to occasionally check your assumptions. Now, EFA is supported by all the usual MPIs, Intel MPI, OpenMPI, and MVAPH. The common thread is that they all use libfabrics, which is EFA's primary method for presenting its hardware to the world. EFA is also supported by NVIDIA's Collective Communications Library, or NICL. NICL is NVIDIA's version of MPI for machine learning frameworks that exploit the power of GPUs to make model training tractable in human amounts of time. The very fact that all these MPIs and Nickel supports EFA means that you can just get your application running on AWS by installing it and running it with one of those MPIs. Seriously, no code changes, it just works, like you'd expect. Now, you can get access to EFA in one of several ways. By far the easiest way is to just spin up a cluster using AWS Parallel Cluster because every parallel cluster contains everything you need to get started. And then you only need to click on a few buttons to get one. EFA comes pre-configured on parallel cluster for instance types that offer it. And you can also get a console tool to help you conjure up specialized storage like Lustre or ZFS. And you can do visualization with DCV and well, a lot of other things. Seriously, if you just wanna get moving, use parallel cluster first. But if you're one of those people who needs to build it yourself from scratch, there's a whole bag full of documentation here, which shows you how to configure a specific environment in Amazon EC2 that's ready for EFA. And then it'll walk you through using the EFA installer, which will put the EFA drivers, kernel modules, and open MPI packages into your system. Now, as the name implies, EFA's big focus is on elasticity. Its job is to provide great scaling performance for your workloads. So as you scale up the size of the problem you're attacking by adding more memory and probably more cores, EFA's job is to ensure that networking isn't a bottleneck. Armdahl's law warns us about the limits of scaling any application and just how hard it is to achieve perfection. So when we saw scaling curves like this, Coming from the early versions of EFA, we knew we were onto something. Even if those simulations were helping the Klingons prepare for an Earth invasion. At a different extreme, weather and climate modeling is a workload that's tough to make scale. The red line on this graph was super sweet to see because firstly, it was following very closely to a purpose-built supercomputer with a very fancy interconnect, but also because it beat the pants off that orange line, which is a previous generation of EC2 instances without EFA. The bottom line is that if, like me, you've grown up in our HPC community with the assumption that MPI ping pong is a great predictor of performance on a cluster, well, it's definitely time to check your assumptions. Now, by this point, you're wondering how this thing works. It's not magic nor marketing, but it's a creation that comes from looking at the problem through a different lens. We'll pick that story up soon in another Tech Shorts Foundations video. So, if you've made it this far, Here's what I hope you take away. First, EFA has got your back. It's designed and built to give you the same experience as you'd expect on a traditional on-premises cluster using any number of interconnects.
Second, because it's built on Lib Fabrics and is tightly integrated with Intel MPI, OpenMPI, and Bapich, and NVIDIA's collectives library, Nickel, you don't need to change any of your code to work with it. Third, it's available in dozens of EC2 instance types, which means you can shop around EC2's catalog for the right CPU, GPU, storage, or memory model that, that you need for your jobs. EFA is available on Intel, AMD, or NVIDIA-based lifeforms in EC2, as well as our own Gravitons, which are our ARM-based processors. It's certainly not one-size-fits-all. Finally, you can get running with EFA just by spinning up an AWS parallel cluster, or you can build your software stack by hand if that's your thing. If these TechShorts Foundations talks are helping you get your head around how AWS can work with your codes, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel so you can get notified when we have more material like this for other HPC topics. And don't hesitate to contact us on Twitter if you want us to spend some time on a topic you're interested in. Thanks for watching. See you next time.